Looking to take your animations to the next level? I've got the Blender color and tricks you need. In today's video we'll be using Blender's Grease Pencil to bring line art to life with vibrant colors. Let's get started. Before we dive into our main animation, let's learn the basics using something a bit simpler, like this cute little frog. First, let's set up our materials. See this little icon with the sphere? This is where we define the style, color and textures of our strokes. You have two types here – stroke and fill. Stroke is mainly used for drawing line art, but we will be using the fill material to block in our colors. Let's keep the settings simple for now. While drawing you can select your material from this list or using the menu in the top toolbar. In the data section on the right you'll find the list of layers. Layers work similarly to any 2D editing software. Use layers to define what's rendered on top and to keep your project organized. Generally you'll want to keep your line art separate from your color fills. To add a layer press the plus icon. To move them up and down use the arrow buttons. You can switch layers on and off Lock them to prevent editing, merge or rearrange them, just like in other 2D programs. You can use a layer as a mask for other layers. For example, if you want a shading layer to stay within the shape, add a mask component to the shading layer and select the main fill layer. This saves time as you don't need to be super precise around the edges. Now for the tools. For coloring, we'll be using either the draw tool or the fill tool. With the draw tool and fill material selected, you can manually fill areas, while the fill tool does it automatically within enclosed lines. Let's see it in action. We have a line art that needs to be colored. Create a new layer and use the fill tool. Select the fill material you want, then click on the area you want to fill. Boom! You've filled your first part. Now let's try it here. Oh no, it didn't work. That's because there is a gap in the line art. To fix that, we have a few options. First, close the line art by drawing or editing the line. Second, use boundary strokes. Invisible lines in the render that help close gaps. To create one, turn off the render preview, select the fill tool, hold Alt and draw a stroke. Now when you use the fill tool, it will factor in the boundary stroke. To remove them later, use the Cleanup Boundary Strokes menu. Lastly, use the Automatic Gap Closure feature in the Advanced Settings of the Fill tool. You can specify the gap size and method, and the algorithm will handle the rest. Oh, and by the way, the Fill tool might depend on the zoom level, so sometimes you need to zoom out for it to work properly on certain areas. Try out its settings to understand the tool better. Now you know the tools we'll be using, let's talk about strategies. We have two main strategies for coloring. Use multiple materials for each color, this gives you more control over the look of your animation and allows you to change color throughout the entire animation later. You can control the fill colors from the material tab, but this limits you to whatever colors you've assigned and it's pretty long to set up. Or you can use a single fill material and switch to vertex color mode. Press this icon to enable vertex colors. And now you can select any color you want for your stroke. This option is much faster, only one material needed, but it can be painful if you want to change the colors later. You can mix these strategies together, just keep things organized and avoid the mess. For complex frames with multiple colors and lighting, it's a good idea to sketch out the color reference before doing it in Blender. If you're working with the simple fills, it's fine to do that in Blender directly. But for more detailed animations, 2D software is often faster. So I rendered my line art and pasted it into Krita. I filled in the main colors using the fill tool and added secondary colors with clipping masks. Working in a 2D editor allows for faster palette exploration and it's way easier to adjust lighting and colors. Just make sure to replicate the same shading style. Avoid halftones or blended colors as these are harder to achieve in Blender. It's not impossible, but keep in mind that added complexity will increase production time. Indie animation is already challenging enough. 
Once the sketch is done, save it and import it back in Blender as an image plane. I made one copy on the side and another one under the grease pencil for light and shadow separation reference later in the process. Next, I prepare the materials. I create the material and just pick the color from the reference I made in Krita. Now, with the materials ready and a new layer created, I'll pick the fill tool and fill the ambient colors first. Do this for each element. If you get gaps, feel free to fill them manually or adjust the stroke points in edit mode. You can also try increasing the precision of the fill tool. Once the base colors are done, it's time to fill the lit areas. To do that, draw color separation lines like those colored lines used in anime production. These lines help us quickly fill light areas with the fill tool. Same goes for the darker areas. Awesome! We filled our first frame. Now how do we fill the rest of animation without going crazy? Here's the trick. Create empty keyframes for each frame of your animation. Select multiple frames on the timeline, including the keyframes from your line art layer, press the multi-frame toggle and you'll see all the selected frames shown in the viewport. Now with the fill tool, look for an enclosed part shared by all the keyframes and fill it in one go. How cool is that? You just filled multiple frames with one click. It might not be perfect if some frames have gaps, but it's still faster than filling each frame by hand. To fill light across frames, you still need to draw color separation lines on each frame and then use the fill tool to fill them with color. Alright, now that you know the tools, let's apply everything we learned and colorize the entire animation to make it look professional. If you enjoy the process, don't forget to hit subscribe and like button, it helps share the video with more people and grow the channel. Ok, see you in the next video.